This episode of History Hunters takes Jeff and Sarah to historic Carson City, Nevada, and the house once inhabited by Orion Clemens and his brother Sam Clemens, better known as Mark Twain during the early 1860s. Stops include the church where Orion Clemens and his wife worshipped, and Lone Mountain Cemetery, where they buried eight-year-old daughter Jenny Clemens, also Mark Twain's niece. Jeff also stumbles upon the grave of other celebrities, including governors and legendary stage driver Hank Monk. We are in Carson City, Nevada today. It's a very beautiful summer day. We decided to do a little history hunting here in the capital city of Nevada. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the Orion Clemens house. The brother of Mark Twain built this house in 1862. And Mark Twain lived here. In 1861, Orion Clemens was appointed secretary of the new Nevada Territory. He was uh, friends of Abraham Lincoln, or at least a political friend of Abraham Lincoln's, and he got the appointment. His brother Sam tagged along. You know him as Mark Twain. Orion at first wanted to bring his wife out here, Molly, and his daughter, Jenny, but he couldn't get an advance of $1,800 that he needed to help move him out here. That was his salary. The Nevada State Legislature was just in its infancy and decided not to give it to him. Well, that meant that Molly and Jenny would have to come out here later. I think they arrived here in October. Sam Clemens, better known as Mark Twain, uh, he had been a riverboat captain and he lost his job and it was a civil war and so he couldn't find much work. He was ready for some adventure, so he decided to come out here with his brother. We know that he went to Aurora to do some mining. Then he also went up to Unionville. He didn't make any money at it, so he decided that he'd start writing. And he found out that his true talent was writing. Some of the writing he did was upstairs in that bedroom up there. This house originally was had clapboard siding and wasn't stuccoed the way it is now. It's a law office now. But if you could just imagine that Sam Clemens himself walked this neighborhood, probably smoking, as he thought about how he wanted to be rich. He would not become rich through silver or gold mining, but through the pen. It's been said that he came up with his nom de plume, which is French for pen name, of Mark Twain up there in one of the bedrooms. When this house was built, Abraham Lincoln was only one year into his presidency. So it's one of the oldest houses still in Carson City. Despite Carson City and the Carson River being named after the legendary frontiersman, Kit Carson probably never stepped foot on the future town site as he blazed trails through Nevada to California in the 1840s and 1850s. Ironically, Orion was not a very successful businessman or politician, and it was his brother who made a living for him later in his life. So he was kind of living in the shadows of Sam Clemens. So there was some tragedy that occurred in this house. Little Jenny, she was born in 1855. She was quite into Bible study. She liked to pray. She liked to read. She was a very intelligent little girl and the whole community loved her. One of the young girl's admirers was Hannah Keziah Clapp, the teacher at the Sierra Seminary in Carson City. Mark Twain once visited her private school and had such praise for it that he wrote an article calling for the state legislature to financially support its operation. One of the visitors that liked to come and visit her was Dan DeQuill, who was one of the writing partners of Mark Twain in Virginia City. Dan DeQuill is legendary in Virginia City. He came here one time and saw Jenny reading, and she was looking in this book. She said, I'm glad I found it, I'm glad I found it. And he said, what is it? He said, it's cod fishing off the coast of Newfoundland. What it actually said was cod fishing off the coast of Newfoundland. Dan DeQuil had a great laugh about her, her mistake in that book. And tragically, on January 29th, 1864, Jenny contracted spotted fever. It's been said that in her illness, Jenny was upstairs in her bedroom reciting the Lord's Prayer, while Orion, Molly, and Sam kept watch over her. Sadly, on February 1st, 1864, Jenny passed away in this house behind me. 
Not only was the Clements family devastated, but so was the entire community of Carson City, which was small at that time. The community turned out in mass for her funeral up at Lone Mountain Cemetery. We're gonna go try to find her grave. Sam Clemens was so upset with the undertaker with Samuel Wright. He was extremely irate about the fact that Sam Wright was charging the family $150 for a coffin that cost $20 and charging $50 for a plot that cost $20. He started ranting to the paper. He wrote a letter to the Territorial Enterprise in Virginia City and the Carson City Independent just railing against them for even accepting advertising and not challenging the fees that the undertaker was charging for people in their moment of grief. The theme of slamming undertakers carried through his entire writing career. The newspapers responded by saying that if the fees were so exorbitant and out of line, it was up to the customers to carry on their disgruntled tirade against the mortuaries instead of having the newspaper do that work for him. So he said that the newspapers were only good for writing insipid chalk milk editorials defending the abuse. Orion and Molly never had children again. In fact, they left in 1866 and went back to her hometown of, of Keok, Iowa. At the time of her death, Jenny was trying to raise money for a Bible for the first Presbyterian church where her parents were going. Blocks away from Clemens House, the first Presbyterian church attended by the Clemens family awaits a visit. So I've come over here to Nevada Street, just a couple of blocks from Orion Clemens House, in front of the First Presbyterian Church. Now, as a founding member, Orion Clemens was raising money for this church. Mark Twain actually gave a speech, one of the first paid gigs, to try to raise money for the building of that church. It's been said that after Jenny Clemens died, the community rallied around her cause to buy a Bible for this church. And I understand the Bible was bought and dedicated in her name and is a church keepsake today. This church has been remodeled a number of times over the years, but has some stained glass windows up there in this very historic building. Let's go up here and get a closer look at some of these bricks. Paint is chipping away. Look at those window sills. Look at those thick layers of paint on the wall. It's been painted probably a number of times. Look at that. Here's the front door of the church. Here's your stained glass right here. Look at this flakes of brick that's crumbling from above. It's just falling apart. Look at this. So it is indeed likely that Orion and Molly Clemens walked to the doors of this church because they remained here after the death of their daughter until 1866. If these steps could talk, I wonder how many historic figures, how many governors walked on them, how many bodies were carried out these doors from funerals here. Jeff and Sarah drive over to Carson City's Lone Mountain Cemetery in search of the grave of Jenny Clemens and other dignitaries. This is the grave of Roswell Coolcord. He was the one who was featured in my Aurora video. He was the superintendent of the mine there in Aurora. And he was the one that pronounced the death, the shooting death of William Carter as a necessity because he was such a bad guy. And I got excited about it. So what did you think about my excitement about spotting the grave of Roswell Colcord? It's just like you. <laughs> Doesn't do anything for you. No. <laughs> but it's fun to watch you get excited about these things. Talks about him being 7th Governor of Nevada first governor of Nevada to support women's suffrage. He was appointed by McKinley to serve as the superintendent of the Carson City Mint, 1898 to 1911. Oh, and he died at age 100 on the anniversary of Nevada's Diamond Jubilee. We've got this metal nameplate for the coal courts. Ouch, ouch, hot today, hot today. He was superintendent in Aurora of the mine office. And you can see here, he was a mason. Unfortunately, we have another family member of the Colcords to 
tombstone knocked right off. I do not get the fact that people will do that. Just desecrate cemeteries for their kicks. Well, here we go. Here's another governor of Nevada. This one is the eighth governor. Makes sense. Seventh is over here. Eighth's over here. John Jones lived from 1840 to 96. His first governor of the Silver Party. He lost his battle with cancer and died while in office. Wow. Over here, I recognize that slanted tombstone. That is the grave of Jenny Clemens, the only child of Orion and Mary or Molly Clemens. Sam Clemens himself probably stood at this site and pottered on the little life of this girl, his little niece, and probably wept. Maybe even looking up into those hills while they were given this funeral service. I understand that on the day of her funeral in February of 1864, the entire state legislature was closed for the day so that all the legislators and staff members could attend her service. Jenny, only child of Orion and Mary Clemens, Iowa, 1855, Nevada. This ivy, I understand represents eternal life. Any child made it to heaven, she did. She was pretty devout in her Christian beliefs and studying the Bible and praying even while she was sick with spotted fever. Her story continues to resonate with people who've left all kinds of mementos, such as ceramic rabbits, angels, bears, and even a Christmas tree. This plaque reads, you're not alone, Jenny. Your Presbyterian sisters cherish your Bible. Jenny's all by herself because her parents are buried back in Hannibal, Missouri. We're gonna see if there's some other historical people that we can see. Somebody had the bright idea a long time ago to make cast iron headstones. Probably was cheaper, but this is an example of that. That rocky mountain over there is kind of a neat little accent to this entire graveyard. Okay, so here's the Curry grave site. This man, Abram Curry, was essentially the father of Carson City. He was the first superintendent of the Carson City Mint. And to honor him, this granite marker was erected at his gravesite in 1964. At the time of his death, his wife claimed that he only had one dollar left in his pocket. Maybe she spent it all. Oh, interestingly, look at this. This memorial came from Sonora, California. Abram Curry is the one who helped the, the Clemens family to buy her memorial headstone over there. He must have been a pretty benevolent guy. Right here is another historical grave. George served as the Nevada State Treasurer, 1882 to 1890. He also operated the St. Charles Hotel. P.H. Clayton, founding member of the Democratic Party in Nevada. So this is a story, a notorious secessionist P.H. Clayton served a three-week sentence of carrying a hundred-pound sack of flour around the parade grounds at Fort Churchill, which is today Nevada State Park. He served with the Carson Rangers during the Pyramid Lake War of 1860. I've never quite seen anything like this. His body is buried in this strange structure. So far off in the distance here are two more, or two or three more little signs. We'll see who these people are. So this is a very interesting grave. It's of Henry Monk, lived from 1826 to 1883. He was a stage driver, but an experience with Horace Greeley is what caught the attention of Mark Twain. So Hank was a legendary driver for H.M. Benton. He drove stages from 1857 to 1883. Um, his most famous ride was for the one that he gave Horace Greeley, editor of the New York Tribune. The ride, 90 miles over rough terrain from Carson City to Placerville, was completed in just 10 hours. This story was made famous by Mark Twain in his story, Roughing It. And there, as you can see, this was upright at one time and was knocked off that pedestal right there. Says he was 50 years old when he died. First Lady Pat Nixon is from Eli, Nevada. So she is one of Nevada's favorite daughters. <laughs> 
So there's a Patricia Nixon right here at my feet. It's not her, it's not the First Lady. Obviously the First Lady is buried and you're Belinda next to her husband. It might be easy for somebody to come by and go, oh my gosh, Pat Nixon, First Lady, there she is. I didn't know she was buried here in Carson City. Well, she isn't. M.M. Gage, died 1886. It says here in the 1860s, it was a saloon keeper. That just means he was good at BSing people because he got into politics after that. As you can see over there, that headstone, way over there, it's Henry Yarrington. He was superintendent of the Virginia and Truckee Railroad, 1868 to 1910. The city of Yarrington was named after him. Poor Henry wanted the Transcontinental Railroad to go through his town, but it didn't. Here we go. Yarringtons are back here. Underneath this giant cross that must weigh tons, he's buried underneath that marker, just marked with his initials. Oh, there's a deer over there. You see her? Come here, baby. There she goes. Look at that. How many times do you see a deer go through a cemetery? I've got another governor of Nevada. First governor of Alaska? Are you kidding me? The first governor of Alaska is buried here? This is almost hard to believe. The third governor of, Ala of Nevada is here. Governor Ken Keed. He was the territorial treasurer of Nevada from 61 to 64. He was the first territorial governor of Alaska from 1884 to 1885. That is incredible. I gotta tell Sarah about that deer. She's gonna flip. She loves animals. Find everything you were looking for. Guess what's out there? What's out there? A deer. Where? A big one. Just laying there? No, he's walking around. He saw me and he's like, stop looking at me. You wanna walk over? Kinda. If we take the car, then he's gonna scare him off. I don't wanna scare him. How do you get Sarah out into a cemetery? <laughs> you tell her <laughs> there's a deer. <laughs> You tell her there's a deer and she comes out. Oh, I went around the other cemetery. There he is. Traipsing around the graves. Huh? Probably a she. Probably a she. I think this is interesting how they preserve these wooden headstones by putting some metal over it. So water doesn't run down in them. They're already rotten pretty bad. But do they say anything? No. Well, they did. Can't even make it out. Somebody's come through here and just tore them up. So I'm gonna leave you now at the grave of Roswell Colcord, the seventh governor of Nevada, to say I hope that you enjoyed this episode of History Hunters and our visit to Carson City. Hope you learned a little bit more about the Clemens family and a little bit about Nevada history as well as some of the famous people who are buried in this cemetery. As always, we would love to have you as a subscriber. Hit the like button, maybe comment below, share this channel because we've got a lot more historical adventures to share with you in the coming days.